Jacqueline Napoleon. I'm the Director of Graduate Recruitment and Admissions at the Rockefeller College of Public Affairs and Policy at the University of Albany. And I'm here today with Dr. Edmund Stasek, who is a uh, professor in our Public Administration Department at the University. And he's going to talk to us a little bit today about public management within the MPA program. Um, hello, Dr. Stasek. Hello. Uh, and, <laughs> and thank you for watching this video, all of you. Uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to talk a little bit about what it is that uh, I do and we do here at UAlbany. Awesome. Well, okay. So tell us a little bit about you and uh, a little bit about public management in general and all of the things that, that you sort of feel like encompass within the MPA. Sure. Uh, so my background, I have an undergraduate degree and a master's degree in public administration and policy. Uh, I spent a couple of, of years working for a health and social policy institute before I decided that this is really the route that I wanted to go. Uh, so I left my MPA program and the job that I had at the time and went and got a, a PhD at the University of Kansas, uh, where I specialized in, in organization theory and behavior and public management and human resource management. Uh, and then uh, when I graduated from, from Kansas, I picked up and, and started my first job at American University in, in Washington, D.C., where I was on the faculty for six years uh, before I moved over to UAlbany, and I've been thrilled with the move. Uh, you guys will all have a good time if you end up coming here. <laughs> Uh, and and I, I um, would just, just add that I've been here for about, about six years at this point in time as well. I have great colleagues, uh, uh, wonderful uh, faculty who will be instructing all of your courses. Um, more specifically with respect to public management, public management really involves the study of, of what it takes to build an effective, high-functioning organization uh, and ultimately to, to secure the, the best uh, from your employees and your workforce as, as possible. So we spend, public management scholars spend a lot of time trying to figure out and make sense of, of what it takes to build a high performing uh, organization structurally. Uh, but then what you can do, for example, to motivate your workers uh, uh, to help secure the, the best that you can or the most that you can from them. Great. So what are, what, so we, we're lucky in Albany, we have a great, you know, seat of government here. So um, when you talk about students in terms of the opportunities within like local, state, and federal government, what, the, what are the what kinds of employment are out there for students in those levels? <clears throat> so a public management student really has a lot of different opportunities that are available to them. Uh, as, as Jacqueline has already mentioned, uh, there are opportunities at the local, state, and national level. Uh, and, and some of those opportunities involve government employees, so working for a, a local government. There are about 90,000 local governments in, in the U.S. context alone, so a lot of opportunity in that space. Uh, uh, and then, and then uh, obviously, administrative positions in the context of, of state government as well as the federal government. Uh, but there are a range of other places that you can use a public management degree. Uh, it's increasingly become the case over time that, that more and more public management students and, and students with MPA degrees are being uh, pursued by private firms, uh, in part because those private firms oftentimes will contract with, with government organizations and they want someone who understands how government works. Um, uh, it's also not uncommon for public management students to work for, for nonprofit organizations, uh, research uh, think tanks, uh, policy shops, so on and so forth. Uh, and, and we have alumni of, of uh, UAlbany's program who, who uh, work in a range of other sorts of positions, so for example, running advertising firms. Uh, so really, the, the sky's the limit with an MPA degree. It's a, it's a great degree to have, and uh, I think you've chosen wisely as you're, you're watching this video and thinking about this program. So tell us a little bit about some of the courses that you teach and sort of what are some of the themes that you really focus in on. Sure. So... Uh, in terms of the courses that I, I typically teach, in the master's program, I am one of the core instructors of, of RPAD 506, which is our, our main public management course. Uh, in that course, we tend to spend a lot of time, we, we spend the first half of the semester trying to make sense of, of, as I mentioned before, what it takes to build and craft a successful organization. Uh, so, so really, when you think about managing organizations, uh, there are these structural aspects that we need to, to sort out and, and figure out how to uh, uh, develop well. Uh, bureaucracy, administrative systems, uh, rules, formalization, so on and so forth. Um, so one part of managing well is making sure that you have administrative systems and structures in place that, that are well designed themselves. So we typically spend about half this, the term uh, talking about those structural issues. And then in the second half of the term, uh, we transition to, to a focus on employees and, and how you uh, uh, go about uh, securing the the most that you can and uh, in, in a positive way from, from your employees. What, what can you do 
uh, as a manager to make sure that your employees feel valued and appreciated uh, and feel that they're, they're being rewarded fairly by your organization and enjoy the work that they do. Uh, so in that second half of the term, we, we look at concepts like employee motivation, uh, organizational goals, uh, teamwork and team behavior, diversity, uh, uh, culture, communication, leadership, so on and so forth. Um, so that's the primary course that I teach at the master's level. I teach a similar course at the undergraduate level uh, that's targeted and geared toward undergraduate students. Uh, and then I also occasionally teach in the PhD program. And in the PhD program, I, I tend to focus more heavily on, on my research on organization theory and behavior, uh, which is really just a, a much deeper dive into many of the issues that I've already mentioned. Um, in terms of my own research in this space, uh, I spend the majority of my time looking at, at specifically what motivates employees. Uh, and I do that in a couple of different contexts. I have tended to look at, at uh, whether or not public and nonprofit employees have higher level, higher, express higher altruistic intentions or motives uh, uh, when they think about, about their careers in general. Are they interested in helping other people and uh, 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 what does that look like in practice? How do they how do they carry that altruistic those altruistic intentions uh, through to their their uh, final conclusion? Um, the other area, which is which is probably the place that I spend the majority of my time researching, involves the study of organizational goals and how organizational goals can be structured uh, to to uh, change and shape the behavior and conduct of of employees themselves. Uh, so we've learned over many many years that that uh, there are things that you can do. Uh, to enhance the likelihood that that an employee will will at the end of the day turn around and and work toward goal attainment or or, or uh, achieving whatever goal it is that an organization has articulated, uh, and th these are relatively simple things like setting clear goals, setting goals that are difficult but attainable. Uh, so so employees tend to spend more time working toward things that are a little bit uh, difficult, not too difficult, and not too simple. Uh, they have to feel like like uh, those resources, uh, there are resources being provided by the organization to help them uh, realize those goals. Uh, so, so that's another area in which I've conducted a lot of my research, trying to unpack the various ways in which uh, goals can be structured to. Great. So um, in your classes, when you, you know, when you have a group of students and you're working on all of these kinds of um, different aspects of organizational behavior and management. What's an example of a project or, you know, a, a group project that students did that you thought was particularly meaningful for them and perhaps an example of one that, you know, students really took and, you know, and ran with it. <clears throat> yeah, so in, in uh, 506 in particular, I have a, I require students to engage in, in what I call an organizational analysis project. Uh, and, and I've managed this project a little bit differently depending on whether or not I'm teaching fully online or I'm teaching in, in some sort of brick and mortar capacity. Uh, if I'm teaching in person in a brick and mortar setting, uh, usually what I ask students to do in that class is, is uh, I turn the project into a two-part project where the first half of the project uh, really requires students to think a lot about how they would go about designing a survey that would let them tap uh, and explore uh, organizational issues. I want students in my class to be able to walk out of the class with practical skills that they can use in their own jobs and when they're managers. Uh, and, and so one of the, my goals and one of my aims in these courses is to make sure that students understand what good measurement looks like uh, and how you go about trying to figure out whether or not people are actually satisfied with their jobs and committed and what they might be dissatisfied with and how you can correct for that. Uh, so, so stage one of this project in the in-person class is, is to develop a set of measures or to compile a set of measures uh, that let students answer uh, a, a theoretical question that's of interest to them. Something like, for example, are you, are you motivated? Are, do you have altruistic motivations? Do you feel like you're being paid enough? Um, and, then, and then the second stage for, for my in-person class is uh, I tend to give my students an actual data set and I put them into a, a group setting in this context. Uh, and that those groups are responsible for generating their own management questions and then testing those questions and, and reporting out, generating an executive summary and a report uh, that, that illustrates what they found and what they would recommend to a hypothetical manager or boss or supervisor. Uh, so I, I really enjoy that project in general. I like doing, like, uh, doing the project in, in the brick and mortar setting in, in part because I think students uh, oftentimes generate some really interesting, cool projects. Um, 
in the online setting, that's it's somewhat harder to do. So, so instead, uh, what I do in, in this context is uh, assign, uh, well, students pick an organization that they're interested in, public, private, nonprofit, uh, uh, any organization they're interested in. Um, and as long as it's, it's uh, a suitable organization, they then have a, a robust set of questions that they have to uh, work through, uh, in, in essence, to assess whether or not that organization and its employees are, are structured in ways that uh, will lead to high performance. Um, realistically, this is, it builds on all the materials that we cover in the context of 506 uh, and provides an opportunity for students to think through many of the, the thornier or more difficult uh, issues that we'll have struggled with during the course. But I think cool. you know, for what it's worth, I think students enjoy it. Uh, <laughs> That's good, <laughs> but that's actually a good segue to my next question. So what, what does a good strong student look like in your estimation? What are some of the skills? What type of, um, you know, what kind of strengths can they bring to a class like yours or in the program in general that's gonna help them be successful? Yeah, so I think if, if you were to uh, ask this question of students who have had me in class before, they would all uniformly tell you that, that uh, if there is a thing that I will repeatedly tell them, uh, it is that there are no right answers in the context of, of public management and that context matters considerably. Uh, a, a particular management prescription that works in one situation may very well not transfer to another one in, in large part uh, because, because some of those contextual factors are a little different. Uh, you have a different employee makeup, for example. Uh, and so, so realistically for me, when, when I think about a successful student uh, and the skills that they'll bring to class and that I hope that they'll leave my class with, uh, I want a student who is, who is uh, intellectually curious, uh, who's, who's willing to ask uh, whether or not uh, the ideas and concepts that we're discussing square with, with their understanding of, of the world and what they know, uh, and, and who are capable of, of thinking through trade-offs between uh, different contextual factors that might matter when it comes to running an organization. Uh, so for example, uh, the larger an organization becomes, the more bureaucratic uh, it becomes in a lot of different ways. And, and there are good reasons for that. Uh, and, and so in that context, uh, it, it's sort of silly to suggest that, that bureaucracy is always a, a negative thing and, and that it's not beneficial. It actually is quite beneficial, especially as an organization grows in size. Uh, it, it makes decision-making much, uh, uh, it streamlines the decision-making process and makes it uh, easier to, to navigate. Uh, in a smaller organization, uh, you can rely on a, a smaller set of decision-makers uh, to make decisions, in, in part because there are, are uh, uh, fewer uh, facts and bits of information that you need to keep, to keep on hand uh, or that, that are less likely to be dispersed throughout an organization. Uh, so, so sort of bringing this full circle, I, I want students who come to my class with, with some sort of intellectual curiosity and, and uh, who are willing to, uh, to ask why a thing makes sense or doesn't make sense. And, and I hope on the back end uh, that I'm providing students with, with enough of those contextual factors uh, that they can start to think through some of these trade-offs when, when uh, they start their own careers uh, in, in public management and you know, private firms and nonprofit organizations so they can think through the very real pressing management challenges that they'll confront in their careers. Great, thank you. So my last question is at this point as students are thinking about applying and starting that process and going into graduate school, what's a couple of pieces of advice you might give them? Mm. Uh, spend a lot of time working on your personal statements. Uh, that, sounds, <laughs> that sounds silly, but that's, that's part of how we get to know about you. Um, uh, in, in uh, your, your knowledge, skills, and abilities more broadly. Uh, and then I'd also suggest that you, you take some time to get to know faculty. You're, you're doing that in part by watching videos like this, uh, but, but there's a, a lot of information that's available online. Uh, we're a very collegial faculty. We're very excited uh, to work with students and happy to work with students. Uh, and I hope that you'll take opportunities to reach out to us and, and to get to know us. Uh, you know, the application process is in part about making sure that, that you fit with us, uh, but you also want to make sure that, that uh, the reverse holds too, that, that this is a place that you're comfortable being uh, and, and that you're going to enjoy the next couple of years of, of uh, your studies. Uh, and the, the way that you can do that is, is by engaging early and often and, and staying in touch and, and sorting out what we're all about. Um, I think you'll, if you come, you'll have made a good choice. We are, we are a great group of people who are, who are very, very friendly and, as I mentioned before, very willing and happy to work with students. So uh, 
so you've already uh, got a foot in the right direction, I guess. <laughs> Agreed. I can vouch for that. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Stasek, for your time. We really appreciate it. Have a great day. You too. Thank you. And, and good luck with your choice. <laughs>